The Ganges is India's most important river. Known as Mother Ganges, or Gangama to Indians, it flows through the heart and soul of the nation. It may be a very polluted river, but to most Indians, it is the most sacred place on earth. To die within sight of it is to be blessed. To bathe in it washes away all sins. One drop carried by a breeze that lands on your cheek hundreds of miles away cleanses the soul for three lifetimes. To die here, to be cremated and have your ashes scattered into the river is to be released from the endless cycle of birth and rebirth which most Hindus see as an eternal form of suffering. Hinduism is the principal religion of India. It is one of the most mysterious and ancient faiths in the world. There are literally millions of gods. Some believe there are as many gods as there are Hindus. In Hinduism, every god from every religion is welcomed. People choose the gods which they feel will protect them and help guide them through their everyday lives. To a Hindu, to worship any god cannot hurt. It may even help. The town of Varanasi, which the British called Benares, lies along the banks of the Ganges. It is to Hindus perhaps the most sacred place in the world. People come here not so much to see the gods, as to be seen by them. For many, it is a journey of a lifetime. They have come thousands of miles to pray here. Many people come simply to take a sacred bath in the Ganges. Indians call it taking a dip. Some take the water of the Ganges home for friends and relatives too weak or poor to make the journey. Rumor has it one enterprising Indian company has even begun marketing a soap called Ganga. Its advertising slogan claims to bring water from the holy river to your home in every bar. The Ganges is the main street of Varanasi and its primary source of drinking water. But it is also its laundromat, its bathroom, and its cemetery. In Varanasi, as in most of India, life is lived in public, and almost totally unselfconsciously. People bathe, wash clothes, give birth, and pray to God right next to each other along the riverbanks without so much as a sideward glance. The huge stone stairways, called ghats, form a giant amphitheater along the riverbank, a sort of Indian version of Venice, Italy, filled with half-sunken Roman colosseums. These ghats were built from 1700 onward by wealthy rulers of distant states in India. They built them so their people could have a safe and secure place to perform their prayer when they came to Varanasi on religious pilgrimages. There are ghats for different castes, different religious sects, and for pilgrims from different regions of the country. None of this public cacophony seems to have much effect on the sadhus, religious pilgrims who sit in quiet, unaffected meditation through it all. Sadhus are some of India's most interesting personalities. They have given up all wealth, comfort, and family to wander the countryside seeking wisdom and truth. Westerners sometimes see sadhus as homeless drifters and take pity on them. But to many Indians, these men are to be respected. It is said that in India, politicians are tolerated, generals are feared, businessmen are envied, but sadhus are truly loved. 
and most sadhus make Varanasi their ultimate destination, as it is the gathering place not only for its inhabitants and countless pilgrims and tourists, but also of the Hindu gods. In India, every river is holy, a way to the divine. The history of this great country begins with another river, the Indus. It flows from the high Himalayas in the Indian state of Kashmir down into a region that used to be part of India, but which is today Pakistan. 4,000 years ago, a mysterious people known as the Dravidians began to settle along the banks of the Indus River. Where they came from and how they lived, no one knows. They practiced a mystical religion, worshipping the elements, fire, earth, air and water. Their cities were governed by priests rather than kings. It's believed that the name India, as well as the religion Hindu, comes from the word Indus where India's first civilization developed. While most of India is hemmed in by jungles, mountains or oceans, the northwest corner of the country has always proved the most vulnerable to invasion by land. For thousands of years, invaders struggled across a series of passes in Afghanistan and today's Pakistan to come to India. By following the Indus and other rivers high in the Himalayan mountains, Men knew they would eventually find their way down to civilization and plunder. 